as you know. Um, uh, all of us were told to pick up our bags and go and sell, and not for, for a couple of weeks, but for several months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you spend six to nine months in the field. And uh, I still remember uh, the then marketing director of our company, marketing, at that time marketing controller, Mr. Shunu Sen, which I don't all of you know, telling me the role of sales in India is very different because the reach of, of our, our distribution reach is in fact wider and deeper than the media reach. Your job is to market these brands. So we used to sell during the daytime and show cinema vans and, 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 and give the message of our products. Our job was to brand build, right. not just to go there. Now, of course, we've got, we've got media reach is much better, but we still have 300 million people who don't get reach. So we've got these 45,000 uh, women. Uh, there are a lot of NGOs who are creating self-help groups. A lot of banks who want to give microcredit. What, what they lack is an income opportunity, okay? Someone to tell them what to do. And we come in there to really organize these, uh, these women folk to sell our brands and teach them business. And what really, really uh, amazes me, first of all, is how successful this has been. Uh, this is a very significant part of our growth. But importantly, when I visited one of the, what we call them is Shakti Ammas, because it started in Andhra. When I visited one of them, uh, this lady comes out first, very well turned down. This is a poor family in the middle of villages where you don't have television sets. Husband is behind her, and she's explaining the business to me. And then she says, would you like to come and see some homes where I supply these products and I talk to them? So she starts walking out, husband behind, mother-in-law behind her, sister-in-law behind her. Complete reversal of social order. Right. All because you have empowered them to do little businesses. You know, and, and I think to my mind, there are many, many different models by which you can do what I call doing well by doing good. And I think you know, a lot of, lot of you sitting here may sometimes wonder what, what companies which sell soap and soup, and I know some of you also do other things. Uh, how can you make a difference in the world? You make a difference in the world by ensuring that your brands are meaningful and the way they are marketed actually do a social, uh, fulfill a social purpose. And I think that's really critical too, in markets like these. You know, you, know, you just pick up the newspaper and you see the uh, unrest that's out there and a lot of it is targeted against big business, mm -hmm. okay? And I know in, in, in Davos, uh, 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 we, we have on the program every year in Davos, uh, sustainability. And uh, with this negative attitude towards big corporations, I know Unilever in particular has done a tremendous job in terms of sustainability. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I think the, uh, the first context, uh, I, and I think this is probably one of the most important changes that we are talking about in the world. Uh, I call it the fourth dimension of growth. Uh, when we talk about growth, generally we talk about consistent growth, we talk about competitive growth, we talk about profitable growth. And I think the fourth dimension of growth that's really getting critical is responsible growth. How do you really make sure that when you run a business, right. you can do it more sustainably and more responsibly? And as far as uh, we are concerned as a company, uh, you know, we, we've been on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index now for number one for, for 12 years running. But the more important thing is the commitment that we have now made uh, on our Unilever Sustainable Living Plan which says that we are going to double our business, but reduce our environmental impact by half. Okay, and, and, and so that's one big, big target that we've said we're going to take. In the process, we're going to provide one billion people with opportunities for better hygiene and, and this, and we're going to provide half a billion people, small farmers and distributors with, with jobs. So it's a kind of holistic uh, approach. And um, uh, it's interesting, again, uh, when people say, what do fast moving, what can fast moving consumer good businesses do? Our biggest leverage is the fact that two billion people use our brands every day. And a little small action from them can make a big difference. Two thirds of the, of the entire uh, environmental f impact of our brands comes when consumers use it. It's our responsibility to take charge of the entire value chain I can tell you about what we do in our factories, and that, by the way, accounts for 5% of our entire environmental impact. I can tell you we've saved 40% energy, 50% water, but when a consumer goes and uses our brand, that's two-thirds of the impact. Right. 
So what we are trying to do is making sure that our, all our brands now carry not just a functional benefit or an emotional benefit, but also a social mission. And just to give you an example, uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of ads at the end, uh, we've launched this uh, a product called Comfort uh, Conditioner One Rinse. If we can convert all our uh, condi fabric conditioner users to one rinse, that will save 500 billion liters of water. In India, we launched Surf Easy Wash. Two buckets of water it became one of the most iconic campaigns. We forget how important some of these things can be and how brands can actually make a difference. And I think it is this uh, commitment in a structured and organized way of saying that we have a target for this, that we're going to make sure that we reduce our environmental impact by half, not by reducing our business by half, right. by the way. We want to double our business. <laughs> uh, I, because I otherwise, we won't have uh, shareholders, as you know, Michael, very well. Yes. <laughs> so I think this idea of integrating social missions with brands is critical. Lifebuoy, people ask me, uh, we run the biggest hand washing campaign in the world. Uh, and, and I know I met Robin here, who's in the audience. Hi, Robin. And wanted to know a little more about this. The fact of the matter is that I believe that we save more lives by telling people how to wash hands than pharmaceutical companies. Okay? I do believe that. Okay? And that's the social mission of Lifebuoy, right. is to save lives. So I think it is this part of it, of integrating the sustainability agenda in your brands and your business. Shakti, great example of sustainable uh, living plan. You know, I, I think it's, it's a tremendous what, what you've done at Unilever. I think we have to do a better job of getting that message out there. I think too many people don't, don't, don't view uh, what big business do, and, and certainly in companies, uh, in terms of the efforts like, like uh, Unilever is taking uh, to make the world a better place. And I really do think we have to do a better job of getting that message out there. So let's go, let's go back to the fact that Unilever has certainly been a, a, a critical success in terms of building brands in emerging markets and, and really being the forefront of, of, of uh, the new economies, if you will. Uh, would I be asking too much if I, if I ask you, like, what markets do you see on the horizon? Well, uh, uh, all developing markets. Uh, firstly, 54% of our business comes from uh, developing and emerging markets. We are an emerging market right. company. So when someone tells you, are you an uh, 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 Anglo-Dutch multinational? I said, no, we are the emerging market company. If you, look at, if you look at the whole footprint, obviously Asia, in terms of follow the money, follow the people, right. uh, this is 50% of the people and one third of the world's consumer spending in PP. This is the big market. And within that, India and China is 40% of the world growth. So clearly, these are the big markets. So if you take BRICS, for example, uh, they are without doubt uh, big in, in terms of the impact. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you look at a large number of what I call uh, uh, the brick mist markets and the next 13, I mean, they are fantastic. We have a great business in Vietnam. Uh, 13 out of the 15 countries with 100 million population are in the developing world. 13 out of 15. They are all big markets from Vietnam to Bangladesh to Pakistan to, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, to Africa. I mean, if you, if, I think Africa has not yet been discovered in a business sense. We all get excited about Asia. We've got 800 million people there. And they are, by the way, the African economies have grown by 5 and 6% per annum, unnoticed yeah. by a large number of, of businesses. But I know that a large number of Indian businesses now are discovering that part of the world. So I think there is a huge opportunity. But the question again is, this is not a trading opportunity. It's not opportunistic. Right. The question is, how do we build brands? How do we build markets? The big job to be done is building markets. No, I, I think it's absolutely right. And by the way, it's not by coincidence that we at Interpublic have seen growth in the same markets that you're talking about. And, and, and obviously, uh, India, uh, China, uh, the, all the BRIC markets, uh, Latin America have been huge growth opportunities for us. And, and I think the, the markets that you were talking about will be the places that we'll be investing uh, alongside because we do see that as the, as the, uh, the opportunities that are there. And frankly, I, I have to add, it's pretty profitable business too. I mean, sure. when you're when you're com when you're competing in the more developed environment, it costs a lot more. It's the competition is even is is that much greater. So there's more price pressure. 
when you're when you're in the forefront of new markets, you have an opportunity to build it from the bottom up. Yeah. And you've shown a, shown a tremendous ability to do that. You know, uh, Michael, this point about competition. I think first of all, there is a little bit of a of a uh, um, myth that there is no competition in developing markets. Right. In fact, you have a much more complex competitive scenario in developing markets between low cost local players. By the way, a third of a share in, in fast moving consumer goods is with local players, right. okay, globally in the developing markets. Very, very competitive. The second bit is as growth is drying up in the developed parts of the world, the, the, everyone's moving here. Everyone follows right. opportunity. So I think we've got to be prepared, and I think you make a very important point. At the end, businesses must also be profitable, right. and you have to create the business models to succeed in every single country. You know, you, you whetted my appetite in terms of uh, showing some, some work, uh, and I guess it's in the context of how do you bring all of this marketing to life? So I'll give you that opportunity. Well, thank you very much, and uh, you know what I've done? Uh, I have taken the liberty of actually showing you uh, some pieces of advertising, uh, which hopefully all of you are familiar with, uh, there, there are some examples of, uh, of good campaigns which have moved from being just being functional to being socially relevant, uh, and, and, and some examples of great internet uh, advertising. So I'm going to show you a surf campaign, uh, going back to the old days, to what we are doing with surf now, and you can see that this whole idea of functional, uh, emotional, and, uh, and a social benefit coming through. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of pieces of advertising on this wonderful brand called Lifeboy, which saves more lives than many pharmaceutical companies. Uh, note. Uh, and uh, again, show you an old ad and a new ad. And you can see, again, how that social mission bit is coming through. I'm going to show you an international ad on Dove that won the, the best uh, internet uh, uh, advertising award in 2008, 2009, uh, which uh, two ads on Dove, one that actually is all functional, and one which is all about uh, women empowerment and campaign for real beauty. Now, the fantastic part of this is that most of the advertising I'm showing you, Michael, comes from your stables. <laughs> yes. Okay, and that's the least I could do. <laughs> well, thank but believe you. me, I've been completely objective about that. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we go. <laughs> thank you. She's happy. She's bright. Her mother uses surf. So I just wash with surf. Lots of lather with surf. All your washing needs surf. All your washing needs surf. Surf washes with extra power. Surf washes with extra power. And it gives your clothes the whitest wash. So wash at home with surf. The whitest wash with surf. Get surf today. No, no, four, no, three rupees. Lalita ji, you always think about it and think about it, right? Yes, it's a good thing. And you also have to do it. Look, brother. It's a difference between buying and buying good things. How is it? According to the price of the price of the price, half a kilo of the price 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 of the price. That's why the price of the price of the price is also the price of the price. And the price of the price? अच्छे और सफेद नजर आते हैं <laughs> इस नन्हे नटखट के भी लेकिन पैसे भाई साहब अब थोड़े से रुपए बचाने के लिए मैं इतना सब कुछ क्यों छोड़ दूं? क्यों रवि भैया ठीक से तो लो ललिता जी ठीक कहते हैं सर्व की खरीदारी में ही समझदारी है मिसिस शर्मा कुलकर्मी दाग लगने से अगर कुछ अच्छा होता है तो दाग अच्छे है ना सर्फ एक्सेल दाग अच्छे हैं वापस नहीं करना तंदुरुस्ती की रक्षा करता है लाइफ बॉय लाइफ बॉय है जहाँ तंदुरुस्ती है वहाँ लाइफ बॉय साबुन मैल में छुपे कीटाणुओं को धो डालता है की रक्षा करता है लाइफ बॉय लाइफ बॉय है जहाँ कभी कभी 
सिर्फ एक इंसान एक सोच एक इरादा दुनिया बदल सकता है Better than soap? We're going to prove it. Take a bar of your soap and Dove. Use yours on one side, Dove on the other. Uh-oh, the soap washed side feels tight, rough, because soap dries your skin. The Dove side, smoother, fine lines visibly reduced. Why? Dove is different. Enriched with one quarter moisturizer, your skin is softer all over. Feel the difference. You'll never wash with soap again. I think we did a pretty good job, Michael, but I still feel <laughs> that we may not get the TRPs. So I'm going to show one more ad. <laughs> Can we have the last ad, please? Top Roar Papa pays for the episode and Jeremy check magnets. पेशवे मैग्नेट्स ये करते क्या है रूखे कीटाणु रावण की सेना है और मैग्नेट्स वीर सेना वीर मैग्नेट कीटाणुओं से चिपक जाते हैं उनका सफाया कर देते हैं ताकि सड़न ना हो कैसे वीर मैग्नेट्स हमें छोड़ दो आशीर्वाद दो माते मैग्नेट्स की सेना जीत रही है ले आइए मैग्नेट वाला नया पेप्सोडेंट जर्मी चेक करे दो मिनट में नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट का काम तमाम I thought I had to show you Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, obviously one of the things that we see here is the notion of the, uh, the big idea is still alive and well. We have all the different outlets, we have all the different forms, uh, but without that key uh, big idea, uh, it's tough to grow, grow the brands. So let me, let me ask you one last question, if you would. You know, the average life of a, re a relationship between the agency and their client is about 18 months, okay? Um, really? That, that number kills me. Um, but, you know, we have a relationship uh, going way back to the history of uh, Lintas and Lowe, which is, uh, we just celebrated the 50th uh, anniversary of that relationship. So how do you see the relationship between the agency and the client evolve, uh, evolving in the years to come? Well, uh, uh, firstly, Michael, uh, uh, 50 years? I mean, this has got to be, this is a bit like marriage. I mean, you know, uh, you like it or not, but we are together. You have bet. Um, but you know, uh, uh, before I come to that, you made, you, you made a very important point. We talked about changes, what's changing, media scene, so on and so forth. But some things will not change. 
I think the first thing is the power of brands. Right. People will still buy brands. Okay, what will not change, therefore, is the role of marketing and advertising. Because to my mind, marketing is the reason why people buy brands. Okay? And I think that will not change. Right. Okay, what will, what will also not change is the power of consumer insights and the power of having a point of view about the future. Now, in all this, therefore, I think what will not change as far as the agency is concerned is the ability, like you said, to, to create great advertising that will actually make people buy our brands. And what will not change is the constant bickering around fees, uh, which we will keep doing. That will also not change. Shucks. Uh, but uh, I, think, I think going forward, I would say that if I have to make a prediction, 10 years down the road, the world will be a very different place. The advertising and marketing world will be a very different place. And that will be largely because of the advent of digital. Yeah. And I think the ability, therefore, uh, to be able to work with consumers rather than beam things at consumers is a capability that we have to jointly build because otherwise you can lose it here. That's number one. And the second bit is the great importance of 360. Yeah. The ability to, like they say, go where our consumers are going and how do we do that together. And thirdly, I really do believe that this relationship has to be strategic and not opportunistic. I didn't know the statistics about 18 months, but I would say that the only way to make this work is to always ask the question that Lord Leverhulme used to say, that I know advertising is good, but I also know half of our advertising is right. wasted. Unfortunately, I don't know which half. Right. Okay, and that's why I have to spend the money. And I think getting the return on our marketing investment, creating the right tools to be able to understand where the money is going. So I think that's where life is going to take us. Well, I know here's to another 50 years, and the other lesson in that is, is never take a great partnership and relationship for granted. Okay. So we, we, we appreciate it and, and we will continually work to make that better uh, and more efficient. And, uh, These are public wows, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, again, the insight today, thank you so much this morning thank and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you thank very you, much. Thank you, Michael, really thank enjoyed you. it. Thanks very, very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. May I ask you to please stay on stage for a minute? Um, may I request Dr. Bhaskar Das, President of the Times of India Group and Co-Chairman of Ad Asia 2011, to hand over memento to them. Mr. Manmani, I must tell you, that Lalita Ji ad, it just took me back to my childhood because that and the Life Boy ad, can't forget it. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.